it'll give you the uh, good morning I'm Bill Dow I'll be liturgist for today hope I can get through this new system we have here I'd like to welcome all of you to Colby United Methodist Church whether you're here or listening live this morning on KXXX it's great to be together again and worship God today be sure to register your attendance and write down all re prayer requests by using the forms in the pews. If anyone would like to make an announcement, please make your way up here to the mic now as I call your attention to the following announcements. Sunday school begins next week for all ages, levels at nine o'clock. Kathy Harrison will be leading a group discussion on the book, Your Sacred Yes. Wayne and Millie Horlicker will be leading a group discussion on the book, Beatitudes from the Backside. Youth group information has yet to be finalized. Thanks for your patience. Chancel choir rehearsal will begin September 12th at 7 p.m. with the new director, Carl Frack. So, know something else? Pastor Patrick has some announcements. Yes, I do. If you, uh, if you were in Fellowship Hall before worship service, you probably saw a whole bunch of Bibles sitting out on some tables. Uh, those are for our third and fourth graders uh, for the Know Your Bible class. And one of the things that I, I love to do with, with Bibles is to have people write on them so that uh, as they go through, if, uh, if you have a particular verse or passage that, uh, that you love, you could put something in that passage itself. So when they get to that part, of, uh, of learning your Bible, they say, ah, this is what, this is Wayne's signature right there, or this is Shirley's signature, or, or whoever. And, uh, and these Bibles are going to be with these young people the rest of their life. And so we, as a church family, get to journey with them the rest of their life as well. So we'll, we're going to do a, a presentation of those here in a few weeks, so you'll have uh, opportunity, to, if you didn't make it back there yet, uh, to be able to do so and, uh, and to be a part of encouragement uh, for these third and fourth graders to get to know their Bible. Uh, other is that if you notice on, on the tables right outside the sanctuary, uh, there's a little three-fold uh, brochure. And starting in a couple of weeks, we're going to start the five love languages as a, as a worship series. It might be helpful to know what your love language is. And so this little 30-question quiz, there's no wrong answer, though, so you, you will get 100%. Uh, this little quiz will help you to identify yours, and, uh, and then you can bring it in on the back side, has a listing of, of which, which Sundays are which language, and bring that in with you, and uh, that that'll might make it more uh, personal. It's also a neat idea if you know somebody who doesn't go to church anywhere to take one of these and hand it to them as an opportunity to invite them to church as well. Okay, now it's time to stand up, mingle a little bit, and welcome each other to worship by sharing signs of Christ's love. Thank you. Thank you. How are you, Anna? Yay. Good morning. I'm good. Hey, Emily. I, I was hoping she wasn't going to let go and then I, I could just take her with me. Hey, good morning, Sam. Yeah. Official. Going, yeah. huh? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good. Good morning, Patrick. <laughs> Good morning, Sue. My hands are cold. It's all right. How are you? Cold hands and warm hearts. Yeah, there you go. How are 
The prelude this morning was Amazing Grace by Pat Ziegelmar and Shirley Malcolm. So join in the opening hymn for prayer that's printed on the screen. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, God, we we confess confess that that we have not not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We We have have failed failed to be an obedient obedient church. church. We have not not done your will. We have have broken broken your law. law. We have have rebelled against your love. We have have not loved our neighbors, neighbors. and we we have have not not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. 
through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Our opening hymn is Take Our Bread, number 640. We invite you to be seated as we come to share our joys and our concerns with each other as a community and faith. Top of my joy list was uh, going over to the open house at Puddle Duck on Thursday and seeing all that energy over there. Boy, I wish I could bottle that up. Um, but uh, our Puddle Duck ministry kicks off its academic year on Tuesday, and so. Uh, Amy, may you and your staff have a wonderful and joyous year, and we look forward to some Puddle Duck Sundays here as well so that everyone can see all the amazing things and transformation that you're doing with these little ones. So blessings to you as you begin. I think, too, uh, ha having some rain and cooler temperatures is a joy, is it not? Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, on, uh, on the concern side, you notice, you know, it's Labor Day, so a lot of people take the weekend off, including the right screen. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it happens. So uh, we haven't figured out how, what, what, what uh, transpired that it's not working this morning. So those of you who are on the right side of the sanctuary, uh, you're going to end up looking like giraffes at the end of the service from all that careening that you're going to do to, to look up over here. So, Or there is this thing called a hymnal. An, I know Poppy dusts them every week to make sure that uh, they, they seem to be used. So um, either way, but uh, that's what's going on. We really don't know wh what's going on there. Um, uh, please keep in your prayers uh, Edith Taylor. Um, Edith uh, uh, died uh, really almost a week ago today, and I announced it last week, but it wasn't in the bulletin. So those of you who use this as your prayers may, may not have, uh, have known that. And talking with her, her children, there's going to be a graveside service on Friday, September 21st at 11, and then, and then a meal here at the church following that. Um, Maurice it continues to be here at the hospital, and, uh, and then Lou is also still in Wichita, uh, but, but really, really trying to get 
so that she can attend her granddaughter's wedding here in a couple of weeks. So she's, she's got a goal uh, that she needs to meet. Uh, in talking with uh, Amy uh, over the weekend, uh, Mark is now home from the hospital, uh, which is a very positive sign. And uh, Amy sent me a text right before our church and said, please, please, please let everyone know how much they appreciate your prayers. And so, but continue to pray because Mark's not, you know, just because you're home doesn't mean you're, you're back to 100%. So uh, continue to, to lift them up in your prayers as well. And then uh, uh, talking to Kathy uh, this morning, Dawn is still in, in, at UC in Denver, and, but improving. And their goal is to be home by midweek. So um, I like goals. Goals you can, you can hit. Um, and she did say not to worry, ladies, that she will be here next Sunday to start the Bible study. So, so not, not, don't, uh, don't fret over that. So other, uh, other things that we need to make sure get lifted up today in prayer. Well, if not, let us settle our hearts and our minds as we prepare to go to God. And so let us sing the CARES Chorus. Almighty God, as we uh, come to worship you this morning, we look upon the, the altar and see the elements of communion, a reminder of both your incarnation, where you came down from heaven and entered into human history, into human life, to fully experience everything that a human can possibly experience. God, that just grant, gives us comfort to know that when we struggle, that you know what that feels like. When we're joyous and overwhelmed, you know what that feels like. And when we're with family and friends and celebrating, you know what that feels like. And sometimes when we're with family and friends and we fight, you know what that feels like too. God, it's also a reminder to us of your love that it was so intense that you you. You couldn't just stay away. And so you came to, to bear our burdens, to cast all of our sins upon yourself and to take those to the cross. And so may, may we who follow in those footsteps uh, carry our crosses as well and to help others come alongside and to help carry each others as one community in faith. So God, may we lift up to you those things that are joyous in our lives and in the lives of our church and in the lives of our community, as well as those things that weigh us down and give them all to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
Special music this morning was Happiness is the Lord by Fat Ziggo Marr and Shirley Malcolm. The scripture reading is Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Pastor Patrick said I could have the next part of the service too, but I think I'll turn it over to him. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's right. God, may, uh, may the words that I say and the things we all do Make our life songs sing and bring a smile to you. Amen. So long, long before I knew I was coming here, I knew I was going somewhere. I knew that my time at uh, Kingman was concluding, and uh, and for them and for me, it it, it was time. And um, you'll get there too, by the way. So probably before I do. But, uh, but it's, that's okay. And, uh, and so I, I do what, what pastors do uh, when we know that we're going to be on the move, uh, besides saving boxes. I, I started to troll the conference website on appointment changes. And, and at, at first, what gets listed first are all the retirements. So those pastors that retire, uh, we automatically know that's going to create an opening uh, for someone. And, uh, and then there was this one church I saw on there where there was a retirement. And I thought, hmm, always wanted to live in Hutch. Oh, no, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> that, uh, that it really intrigued me even before I knew that this was where uh, the bishop and the district superintendent had intended me to go. That when I think of Colby, I think of some of the, the great workhorse pastors uh, have served here from you know, Terry Turner and, and John Seville and um, Marshall Stanton. You know, all three of those pastors in particular went on from here to serve on the cabinet and Marshall's uh, case went on then to serve as president of Kansas Wesleyan. So to be the pastor here really meant, well, you, there was some, some trust, there was excitement, maybe even a little intimidation to follow in, in such footsteps as those. And I can tell you now, I've been here now two full months. And in the last six weeks, we've had 14 house meetings. Thank you very much for all of the hosts and hostesses uh, of those, by the way. And I, I can tell you that without a doubt, after being here this short period of time, I really feel like this is exactly where I was supposed to be. And, and I, I hope that you feel that way too. And if not, well... <laughs> Those on the radio are like, what did he do? So, <laughs> so all right, so let me, let me share with you some things that I learned and part of that affirmation for me as to why I, I feel like I'm here. Well, first of all, I, I learned a lot of really fascinating tidbits uh, along the way, like, like who, who's okay with Folgers and who has to have Starbucks? You know, the very important stuff here. You know, who likes... Apparently, the world is divided this way. Who likes KU and who doesn't? <laughs> or, 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 right, Sue? <laughs> or maybe another way of saying it is, which, which football team can pull out a win over a subpar uh, opponent and which football team can't? But, uh, <laughs> but maybe that's not fair because I'm the only one with the mic. <laughs> and, and it's too bad Kathy's not here because she would appreciate this next one. Uh, who remembers to serve the pastor dessert and who forgets? I think she might have a new most embarrassing moment. <laughs> you 
Now, nothing that I heard really shocked me in, in any real sense, nor was anything that I heard too discouraging. So that's good, isn't it? At least 116 people, because there were 116 responses to at least one of the three questions that were recorded, uh, were made, which right now would mean about 80% of our average weekly worship attendance participated in one of the meetings. I think that's really good. And I also, in, in looking back over who attended, kind of feel like we had a really good cross-section of the age diversity of the congregation attend, with one exception, youth. That youth were nearly missing from the table. There were a couple uh, where youth were there, but not not in, at every single one. And so maybe that's a, a warning sign or a, at least a, a yellow flag uh, for us as a church. So if you remember, I asked three questions at the meeting. Uh, the first two were really what I call status quo questions. Right? They dealt with the way things are now. So I asked you what gave you the most excitement to speak to your heart. And what did you value the most to speak to your head? Trying to connect heart and head. Neither one of those questions asked for you to do a lot of imagining or dreaming or uh, you know, any of those things. And so here are the things, the two ministries that provide us, generally speaking, with the most excitement. We love learning opportunities and we love music. So those who have been part of a, a learning group or a small group or a Sunday school class or a, a Bible study of any type have felt the power of what it means to gather together and to immerse themselves in the word, whether it's a book of the Bible or a topic or, or, or a book study. And at the same time, it's not just about the learning component, but it's about the relationships that develop as a part of being together and sharing life together. Some of those groups uh, may last as little as six or eight weeks and others have been going on for, shall we say,